let's have a little blast from the past. And it seems so weird that in the lifespan of this channel, it's gone from the early LED floodlights like this to integrated uh, driver on board LEDs like this. And traditionally, when these low power LED floodlights came out, they were actually pretty good quality. Definitely better quality in a way than the modern ones because these ones, they tend to have the large array of LEDs and then all they've got is a simple bridge rectifier and then a number of different uh, linear regulators stacked in parallel to drive the LEDs at increasing power. And it's not uncommon for the LEDs just to burn up because they really are baking them. They also flicker horribly. These original LED floodlights didn't flicker because they used little 10 watt LEDs like this and they tended to use switch mode power supplies inside. And recently, some got in touch. I, I was trying to find their email. I couldn't find it. Otherwise, I'd have mentioned their name. But uh, they got in touch and said there's a company selling off their old stock. And they were selling off boxes of these really cheaply. So I, I bought a box. You couldn't really just buy them individually. So I got a box. So let's try it out. And uh, then we'll take it apart just to refresh our minds as to what it used to be like in the past. One moment, please, while I just set that up. Okay, let's check this out. Now, because the Hoppy or Anti, don't, they've only got two connections, no earth, so just out of interest, let's check it to the case. And it is earth, but this is what I'd expect because I think this came from an actual, a real electrical distributor, not a random eBay. So I'll just make sure I don't touch this while it's on because the earth is floating. So I shall plug this in. I don't need to give you a flicker warning. That is a strangely pinky colour light. It's not bad. It should theoretically match the rest of the lighting at the bench because it does say 4000K and it is spot on 10 watts. Power factor is 0.9, which is amazing. Uh, 44 milliamps with our local supply voltage about 248 volts at the moment. Okie dokie. Oh, I could actually. No, no, I won't. I'll just open this thing right now. In fact, I was thinking I could have measured leakage to ground. I don't think there'd be much with this type of circuitry. So let's find a, a suitable screwdriver and we'll take the back off. I know this is going to have a classic driver. So we'll whip the screws out the back and take a look at that. I kind of miss these lights, but I can understand why they moved away from them. Because once you see what's inside this, you'll realize, well, these $1 LEDs are just a cheap way of doing it. But if you look around, uh, you can see dead LED floodlights everywhere. These driver on board ones really grill the LEDs and then they fail and sometimes uh, bridge to ground and sometimes are not earth. So this is the driver side first. And there's the driver, it's the classic arrangement. The earth is onto there. Is it a good connection? Yes, it is a good connection. And we have the classic box here. Oh, with an earth wire going into it. It's got that rubbery potting compound. But there is an earth wire going into this. I wonder if it's actually... I wonder if the metal case is grounded. I'll just bring the meter back in again. And we can go from here onto the metal case. Yeah, it's not grounded. Is that earth wire just disappearing somewhere, or, or is it actually going to some filtering inside? It's a universal voltage driver. That's one advantage it has over these ones. They can sell the same light everywhere. But look at the extra complexity of this. I shall get that out of the way, and we'll take some more screws out. We shall do what you can't do with many of the modern ones, and take the front glass off. Many of them are literally siliconed on now. Once it's together, it's together, and if the, the light fails, the only option you have is to change it completely, which is not fun if it requires... Perhaps I should use the correct screwdriver for this. Uh, not fun if it involves getting an electrical contractor in. That screwdriver is not coming out. I shall try another screwdriver again on that screw. That's an annoying thing about modern LED lights. The fact that uh, homeowners are in a situation where they're being forced to do electrical work themselves now because the modern uh, built-in lights 
it means that in where they, they would have just changed a bulb before, now they have to get somebody... Well, something has to be done with the wiring. You have to physically remove the whole light and disconnect wires. And it's forcing a lot of homeowners to actually do electrical work that they may not be overconfident with, but then it may actually build fake confidence and put them at risk. This is, the, this is what happens these days. I'll find the one universal screwdriver that does all. I know what's in here. It's one of these little LEDs like this one down here. But look at all the complexity to this. One other good thing about this construction of light is that uh, plenty of heat sink compound, still sticky as well. With the classic light, that's it. Uh, all four screws as well, which is quite nice. Not really much to see. It's, it's a high power LED and the power supply. Another nice thing about these is, see how the heatsink fins in the back here are dissipating the heat directly from the LED, and then there's a spacer, and the wires pass through channels, and then it uh, has the power supply in the back, which keeps it thermally separate from the circuitry, because with these ones, although in a sense there are a lot of the voltage being dropped across the LEDs themselves, there is still a lot of heat dissipated by the uh, regulators also. Because of that heat, they don't put smoothing in these and you get a lot of flicker. With this one, uh, the power supply does tend to have that uh, extra smoothing capacitor in it. I kind of want to open this and pare the material away and take a wee look at the circuitry. I want to find out what that earth wire is doing. I think I shall actually do that. Oh, this is riveted in. That's quite annoying. Yeah, that's very annoying. It's press riveted in. But I'm going to uh, open this. So I shall do that right now. One moment, please. Well, that is complete carnage. It was quite hard to open for many reasons, including the fact that they'd actually put little rivets into the end, holding the end uh, of the, the plastic cases on. And if you see the white in there, and this is sort of darker uh, filling, the white was just to seal round the edges and round cables before they then applied the main potting compound. Tough uh, potting compound to remove as well. But what it's revealed inside is quite spectacular. The earth wire is active. It's connected to a class Y spread capacitor to the negative of the circuit, and there's another one going between the primary and the secondary. There is a COM mode suppression choke and a class X2 filter capacitor on the input. Little bridge right fire tucked under there. Capacitor under there, but it's not. Uh, it is power factor corrected. It's not just straight smoothing. This little chip in here is a bright power chip, and it's riding the sine wave. Well, the, ha the full wave rectified sine wave. On the output, we have a couple of capacitors. We've got a standard diode, a high-speed diode, and then we've got another little tero toroidal uh, com mode suppression choke on the DC output. This thing is made to a very high standard. There's also a couple of uh, inductors here. Not sure where they are in the circuitry, but we can take a look at the standard data sheet for this chip. Although, having said that, it isn't. It doesn't have all these other components. They've really gone to town the suppression in this. It's a really good quality power supply. Tell you what, we'll take a wee look at the schematic of the well, the manufacturer's recommended schematic, and I'll show you that right now. So here is Bright Power's data sheet. So things are different. On the input, they do have a fusible resistor. They have the com mode suppression choke before the rectifier. Uh, they have a class. X2 capacitor across there. They've got the, ignore this earth connection, that's the internal earth, but the actual real earth external to this unit has a capacitor to that connection, the, the class Y capacitor, for safety reasons. If the, the class Y is designed so that it fails in a safe way, then there is a, not a smoothing capacitor in this instance. It's really just a filtering capacitor. Where's the circuit board? It's that red one there. And uh, then the basically the waveform here is just riding up and down. It is full wave rectified. I've just drawn boobies again, yes. Uh, full wave rectified, but uh, not smoothed. And it's the usual thing after that. The circuit starts with a small electrolytic capacitor down here. Let me show you that. It's most likely this one here. And it is charged up from that rough uh, full wave rectified DC. 
via this resistor, usually a couple of resistors in series, trickle charges this and that's the delay you get before these things start up. You know when you turn a light on, there's a delay before it starts up? That's the for the bootstrap circuit. It basically uh, charges this capacitor up until it reaches the threshold in here that it starts pulsing the uh, the primary winding. There is a feedback winding. Once it starts pulsing the primary winding, uh, it can sense what's happening on the secondary side as well via the feedback winding. And that has this little feedback circuit to mainly indicate when it's gone open circuit. Um, but also potentially indicating when it's gone short circuit, although that would also reduce the amount of uh, energy being delivered by the feedback circuit. Uh, through this diode and keeping that capacitor topped up once it's running. That's the bit that when uh, this fails after it's been baked for a while, it's these capacitors that will dry out here, as ca happens with all power supplies. Once that happens, um, you end up with a situation where the voltage might rise too high here and it cuts it off and then it does the restart cycle and that's when it does that blip 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 thing that also happens when sometimes the leds fail short circuit and you end up with too low voltage and that also affects this uh, we've got a compensation capacitor not sure what that's for it'll be for possibly for comparator inside uh, and then we get the current sense which sets the amount of energy being dumped into this uh, inductor here it's used to monitor the level of magnetic field induced in the saturation level, really. Uh, and changing that resistor usually has an effect on the output. There is the uh, snubber network, which appears to be over here, and it basically just clips the slight transient when this turns off, just to protect the transistor in here. Um, and it just basically shunts it to that capacitor that then is trickle discharged by that resistor. This will all be deja vu to people who watch this channel on a regular basis because uh, I often feature this uh, sort of the same circuitry. Um, on the output, we've got a high speed diode, it's not a shot key. We've got the two smoothing capacitors in parallel, and then we get the little com mode suppression choke again on there. Plus, uh, on the negative to the negative, we have the class Y capacitor again going to there it is very it, i was going to say it's very textbook it's more than textbook it, they've really uh lavished the filtering on this big time wow impressive so what you gain from using these little power supplies like this it's a lot more complex but it means you're not going to have much in the way of flicker in the output the led is going to be fairly solid light um very good power factor not too much noise, although having said that, the, the, the linear regulator LEDs are, by default, fairly noise-free. Um, I'll put this out the way now. Um, ultimately, it used to be the way they did it. Uh, the cheap import lights, the generic Chinese ones, they didn't bother with any of this extra filtering. It was quite basic, noisy power supplies, but this one must be... This one must have been designed for sale in the UK. It must have been one of the big suppliers in the UK that's selling these that they're clearing off. Um, but really, quite quite surprising. It's a good power supply, good construction of the light. Um, not bad, I suppose, ultimately. Maybe people want more than 10 watt floodlights these days and that's why they're getting rid of them. Or they were going for those super slim, cheap ones with the built-in uh, linear regulator on the... LED itself, and then just basically the cases are all glued together. But these ones, these are completely hackable. You can put new power supplies in them. You can put new LEDs in them. You can customize them. You can change the color of the LED. And for people like us, that is a benefit. But there we have it. Um, the little dinky LED floodlight, a uh, blast from the past, kind of like out of date now in a way. But uh, still very good little lights and quite uh, nice to get a hold of one again and refresh our minds as to what's inside them, particularly a, a good quality one. Very nice.